An exclusive on your side investigation, an Amber Alert that ended in tragedy. And a trail of clues that should have stopped it. Chief Investigator Ron Regan uncovered a massive failure by police, prosecutors, and the courts. Well, that's right. She was a young mother shot to death, her baby kidnapped, an ex-boyfriend on the run. But who killed Caitlin goes far beyond pulling the trigger. Missing. 911, what's your emergency? Okay, where would your daughter go? Go ahead. We rushed over to her house and she's not here. Hello, 911. Caitlin was just 22 years old. Then she hung up. And then she barely hung up. Her seven week old baby girl in the back seat. And Caitlin's ex boyfriend. We have a lot of history with this guy. About to make good on a promise. She was shot? Yes, she's out. Okay, he shot her at least five times. Oh, he shot her five times. You saw him shoot her. I want everyone to see this baby girl. I want them to know that her mother could have been here. If it wouldn't have been for multiple failures of, of police agencies and people just continually looking the other way. Looking the other way, time and time again. Our investigation found the path Dakota Stegall pursued for years was as deadly as the road he traveled last March, when finally striking again for the last time. So the day I die, I will carry in my heart that my baby got horrifically murdered for no reason. Caitlin's father now has custody. Stegall committed suicide. But we found a pattern of violence allowed to continue for more than two full years. Who's trying to kill you? Caitlin first calls for help, November 2014. My ex-boyfriend boy, boyfriend trying to stab himself and he just had me down on the ground trying to stab me also. Stiegel left behind his blood-soaked sweatshirt and a terrified Caitlin. What's your name, honey? Caitlin. Caitlin. Yeah. Stiegel had stabbed himself in the chest. He was committed for a mental health evaluation. Three months earlier, at the county fairgrounds, he was arrested for throwing chunks of concrete in a crowded parking lot. But Stiegel's explosive temper would surface again and again. Almost certainly. I mean, there's been many threats from Dakota on Kate's life. Caitlin's aunt remembers one of them. I'm going to make you lose your job, then I'm going to kill you, and then I'm going to kill myself and I'll be done. That's what he told her. By 2015, arrested again, trying to steal wine. Then, a few months later, Stiegel explodes again in a drunken rage, punching Caitlin in the left eye. In May 2015, she files for this protection order, telling a judge, I don't feel safe. Instead, Stiegel was allowed to roam free. The warrant never served. Records show deputies made only four tries, then gave up. Caitlin's case was dismissed. Hi, I had the police out here earlier. So just weeks later, Stiegel lashes out again for the third time. So he started pulling my hair and holding me down on the bed and hitting me. Over the next 10 months, Caitlin called 911 repeatedly. He attacked me in front of my 14 year old sister. Even her mother called. She's tired of calling the cops because they told her if she called him again, she would get charged with uh, disorderly conduct or something. That's right. A four time victim of domestic violence now fears police will arrest her. We're just afraid that something's going to happen. And it did. It's now January 2016. He was starting to kill her and himself. Caitlin calls 911, but hangs up. And one month later, Stiegel strikes again. He was in a domestic with his girlfriend again tonight. Caitlin has now been threatened with her life six separate times over 16 months. She had tried to get away from him. She knew they were not good for each other. Um, but at the same time, she was still trying to be a friend to him. Um, because he did threaten to commit suicide multiple times. Then, two weeks later, Stiegel sends Caitlin a series of threatening text messages. Her uncle calls police. I have got a guy that is claiming that he is on his way to kill my mother and grandmother. Stiegel now claims he's outside. He 
claims that he has a gun and he's coming there to kill them. Three days later, growing increasingly unstable, Stiegel barricades himself inside his apartment. The press wants to commit suicide. But despite repeated threats and beatings, police, prosecutors, judges, and probation officers could not stop Stiegel from striking again and again until one night Is the female still there with you? Last March. She's, she's dead. She's dead? Multiple people knew. Multiple people have seen it and they never said nothing. We're going to be bystanders to put beautiful little girls like this be raised without a mother? What kind of society are we bringing up? What kind of society are we living in today? Well, our investigation found criminal charges against Stiegel were routinely reduced and he was continually placed on probation. Even more alarming, Stiegel took to social media two weeks before the murder searching for a gun and friends knew what he was planning. No one stopped him. I'm Chief Investigator Ron Reed. Tonight, new and explosive revelations after our continuing on your side investigation. The man who shot a young mother to death after years of repeated threats should never have been on the streets. On your side, Chief Investigator Ron Regan joining us live now. And Ron, you found negligence by two separate agencies here contributed to a heartbreaking tragedy. Well, this is the case that prompted one of the most tragic Amber Alerts in recent memory. A young mother murdered an ex-boyfriend on the run with her seven-week-old baby, then finally committing suicide. But now we've found both deputies and probation officers could have stopped it. What's your emergency? A 911 call. I think it's the boyfriend. From this apartment complex. He's outside and he's like stumbling around in the backyard. Dakota Stiegel is in the backyard. I can't tell if he's drunk or high, but he can barely stand. And it's just days before Caitlin Carroll Peak was shot to death. They weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. And I think that that's what finally pushed him over the edge, is he knew that she was moving on with her life. Now, just days before the murder, he spotted outside Caitlin's apartment. And he looks like he's back all over. He kind of looks like a zombie. So alarmed, a neighbor begs Richland County deputies for help. He's really out of it, and I'm a little concerned for his safety. Possibly on drugs, looking like a zombie, and about to fall over. But instead of arresting him, deputies allow Stiegel to go free. This is a person who had multiple threats against my daughter. Kevin Peak is my Caitlin's daughter. father. He's within feet of my daughter's house, acting strangely and possibly on drugs and not in an altered state. And you let that person stay there, you just make a report and you leave. Somebody who's repeatedly threatened that person's life. In fact, our investigation found Stiegel was on probation for threatening to kill both Caitlin and her grandmother just a year earlier. Conditions included shall not possess, use, purchase, or misuse any alcohol or illegal substance. And even more alarming, instead of being arrested, deputies wrote, spoke to his probation officer, and he is going to report in the morning for treatment. It never happened. If they had arrested him that night, then at least we would have been aware and she would have been aware that he was outside of her house, possibly stalking her, possibly making some kind of plan to hurt her. Richland County Sheriff Steve Sheldon declined an interview to explain why. The department told us only, we are not probation officers, adding there was no offense report completed. <laughs> Why didn't they take him in? Caitlin's aunt. Why didn't they arrest him? Is confused and angry. He was in trouble over and over. He threatened Kate over and over again. At what point do they consider that urgent? Probation officials also refused to explain why Stiegel was never apprehended for violating probation and placed in treatment. You are asking for detailed information and not subject to public records. But for Caitlin's family, it's a massive failure that allowed Stiegel to remain on the street. 
There's no doubt in my mind that, you know, from this moment on, once he had that thing, he started enacting the plan to murder my daughter. And it was a plan that was finally carried out just a week later. Now, tonight at 11, the family of Dakota Stiegel speaks out for the very first time about other significant failures that led to a tragedy that never should have happened. I'm Chief Investigator Ron Regan. Now at 11, a News 5 exclusive investigation, a young mother shot to death. The man behind the gun abducted her seven-week-old baby, triggering a statewide Amber Alert before committing suicide. Tonight, the family of that man, Dakota Stiegel, speaking out for the first time only to News 5. On your side, Chief Investigator Ron Regan has been following this story and says relatives believe the system fa failed not one family, but two. They do, but they also insist they're not making excuses. Instead, they're hoping other families never face the same tragedy. I hope there's somebody out there that we can help, listen. It was her son who shot and killed Caitlin Carroll Peak after she broke off the relationship more than a year ago. We all lost a couple of very beautiful, young, bright people had a very long, good future ahead of them. And it, I believe it's due to his anger and depression. Anger and depression. The family says it's not an excuse, but instead symptoms of mental illness that were never treated. What kind of help was he given, in your view? Not much. Um, did he need help? Yes, he did, and I believe he recognized that. But it was too late. He said, Grandma, I killed Caitlin. And then committing suicide. He was in Med Central once for three days, and they let him out, and all that should have been followed up on. That's the psychiatric floor. Yes, it is. He was there three days, and they let him go. Right. On another occasion, it's where Stiegel was treated after stabbing himself with a knife. <laughs> Oh, and on another. Did I get somebody to do a well check on a fella? He had barricaded himself inside his apartment for hours, threatening to kill himself. It wasn't just a police call here and there. This was a long, repeated history of issues, <laughs> signs, red flags. And on still another. He claims that he has a gun. Threatened to kill both Caitlin and her grandmother. But treatment... Did he get any? Very little. Very, very little. Very little and never sustained. They kept him on the third floor for three days. Said follow up with the center. And that was that. Three days and released him. Yes. And, and I know of at least three, if not four, encounters that he was on the third floor of Med Central Hospital for mental evaluation. Same thing. Three days, out the door you go. But because Stiegel was over 18, his medical treatment was confidential. I definitely think it should have been controlled more. Um, because once he turns 18, I'm out the picture. They don't have to tell me anything. Now his mother has both a message. And I feel horrible for Caitlin, her daughter, and their whole family. And a plea. Where's the help for somebody who needs help today, right here, right now? Where is that help? Nowhere. Nowhere. It's tragic. It's absolutely tragic. His family believes that failure allowed Stiegel to remain on the street, to buy a gun, and ultimately to destroy two lives. I'm Chief Investigator Ron Regan.